that's what they mean by saying you're ahead of your time. It's like, <laughs> well, you're going to have to go through the, the process of being ridiculed and, and such. But, you know, fortunately, there, there is enough of an awakening happening right now that we can make progress on certain fronts. So um, one of the things I've, I've been really, you know, thinking about and struggling with, and, um, and it's a reason that I'm keeping my YouTube channel separate at this point. Um, rather than trying to deal with everything on one uh, channel, um, is what I've come to terms with is that human society is is built on um, two layers of, of belief systems. You have these foundational belief systems that are like mountains that take years and years and generations to to, to break down and to shift, um, and then you have these other belief systems which are like dirt that's layered on top of that mountain, which can shift and in a very short period of time and just one rainstorm can do it like one major event can shift those belief systems and you know, the political beliefs the, the, the beliefs about um, what's happening in the, this country or in the world right now um, I think those fall into um, the second category They're, we can shift those beliefs because the, the evidence is right there um, and people are less attached to those kinds of beliefs even though they're, they can be very attached um, they're less attached to that than they are to these fundamental things like religion, for instance. And they're losing ground. And that's the thing. It's, I mean, we, we are seeing a shift in momentum. Um, I mean, I've watched it in the last 15 years um, because I've listened, you know, I remember um, I, I grew up in Austin, Texas, so I remember hearing Alex Jones on the radio long before he was on the Internet. And I remember just kind of shaking my head going, what? This guy's crazy. This guy's insane. I mean, some of the things he said were just so out there. And, you know, obviously he said some things that I would never agree with. I mean, I'm not I'm telling people that you should listen to everything he says, but a lot of what he talked about are the very laws that we're talking about in current events right now. Um, you know, indefinite detention for, for, for U.S. citizens and, and the use of you know, drones to, to kill people from a distance, um, you know, the, the, the intentional um, misleading of the public in a, um, or use of, you know, pra practices like um, Operation Fast and Furious where they intentionally sold guns to the Mexican cartels. And, and this isn't a conspiracy theory, folks. This is being, this is in con congressional hearings right now. They're discussing this in congressional hearings. It's public. So it's getting I – mean, this is the kind of thing he's been talking about for a long time. That yes, the government is willing to kill people to get a, you know, for political gains. Um, and it's getting harder and harder and harder to, 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 for people to deny that because, because the Internet has changed things, because it's so easy to get that information, because one, one person standing in a crowd can take a cell phone and, and videotape it. Um, it's very easy to, to, to disseminate information, and it's very hard to stop it because it's so easy to, to spread it through multiple channels. So I see that the, 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 the information war um, has, has shifted. It's, it's, we are gaining momentum. It's, it's really happened very quickly, uh, historically. If you look at it you know, from a historical standpoint, um, yeah, this is a shift in paradigm that usually takes generations. Yeah, it's interesting that you say an information ecology. And I think that's, I mean, that, that, that there's two sides of the coin. It is what we are seeing in this new paradigm is an information um, ecology. Um, and yet we are up against a an organized, well-funded group of people who are attempting to control the thinking of um, of the populace through through propaganda, through well-crafted propaganda. But, and, and that's... What's what they're up against is they've been able to successfully do that up against um, individual uh, monoliths, you know, up against media companies. Now they're facing something that they haven't ever faced before, and that's what you were talking about—the information ecology. Um, it's like it's like a business trying to fight mosquitoes, you know. It, it's like they they're they're out of their league. You, you're just not going to win. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is, and that's that's the thing that I really try to get through to people. And that's what, I mean, that's why the foundation really at this point. And actually, from the first video, that was really the focus. And I re, I, re, I returned to that focus, which is bringing people's realization to the fact that 
This is only possible if we obey. This is only possible if we acquiesce. So we have to build that mentality that, okay, first of all, it is a moral responsibility to resist. And two, that we are completely capable of ending this tomorrow if we had the guts. Because we are the, we are the machine. We are the machine. There is no enforcement arm that's not people. You know, it's just people. Um, and yes, there's obviously a few people at the top who have no motivation. There's they're no way they're going to hand over the power. But without their enforcement arm, without the, the police, the military, military, and the taxpayers, nothing would happen. I mean, these people would just be societal rejects. I mean, because these people probably couldn't even hold a job. They, they, they're, they're leeches. So, I mean, we, we need to stop putting them on, on, in a position of such power. I mean, and talking about them as if um, they're a, a force that we could never beat and realize what we need to be dealing with is, is ourselves. Um, and people don't like to hear that sometimes. I mean, it's, especially when you talk about you know, the real edgy issue, which is taxation. This is, this is, this is how they fund it. That we're, we are funding our own oppression. We are funding the wars abroad. Um, and obviously not every country is, you know, can be applied to this. But if you're a part of NATO, and if your country is, is part of NATO, then you, you are responsible. Um, it really comes down to where your money is going. And a lot of people, they don't know where their money is going or they don't want to know. Um, and the, But if you know where the money is going, and for Americans, it's pretty hard to deny. I mean, we're the, we're the front runners. We're the ones who are leading this, this, this war against the world, basically to crush anybody who has any resistance to the, to the Western powers. Um, then you need to ask yourself, you know, am I going to give in? Or am I not? Um, and obviously, that's that's a that's a very difficult question because there's there's legal risk, there's real danger of having something happen to you. Um, exactly. And I, I do. This is going to be coming up in, 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 a, in a video in the future um, because I, I'm 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 wanting to get this out there as the concept before they start shutting down the mediums of. Uh, of, of spreading the information. But I, I'm going to say in the video, obviously, now is not the time because you guys are still fighting among, um, among, your, among yourselves. But we need to be aware of what the weapon is. People need to look at it and realize, okay, this is possible. This is very possible. Um, all it would take would be enough people from the left and the right putting aside their, their, their petty issues and saying, okay, we realize we have a common enemy and they are taking us towards destruction. They are taking us towards world war. And if you can come to terms with that, to realize just how serious that is, that we're talking about nuclear powers here. And that's a future that I don't want for my daughter. And most people who have any sanity don't want that for their kids or for their future, for themselves. And that means the stakes are high. Um, if you can get enough people to realize that, and like you said, 50%, that would be enough. Even 30% would stop the system in its tracks. You get those people together and you say, make an agreement. Okay, we're going to pull all of our money out of the banks. We're going to stop paying our credit cards, our, our mortgages, anything that's tied to these banks, the banks that are responsible for this stuff. And we're going to stop paying our taxes. All at the same time, you do that, the system grinds to a halt. And you have them. You know, right th Then you have the power. You have the ability to di dictate what happens next. The problem is if you're not willing to make a step like that, then – it's not going to work. They don't care if you protest. They don't care. They are way past the no, point of no return in, in terms of corruption. In, in the United States, I, I can't speak for every single country, but um, they will, they're, they're used to dealing with people who are not, not happy. And they're, they're willing to give some concessions and to, you know, gloss over things to make things look a little better. But when you have a system that's this corrupt, that's this rotted to the core, um, you're going to have to clean house, and they're not going to do that willingly. I, yeah, I agree with that. Um, and, I mean, that's that's the way um, – that's why I dealt with it. Um, but in the, one thing that people have to realize in the United States, there is a um, an enforcement arm, the IRS, which they, they will come grab you physically, put you into a cage, you know, put you into prison. Um, that's not the case in every country, but um, in the United States, basically – there, there is the great potential of roundups. Um, I think the United States would try. 
I think they would try. I think they, you look at the laws that they put into place. Um, they, they've been building up the mechanism for mass detentions, for mass arrest. Um, yeah, the, the, people have to realize the United States has the power of the printing press because of, because of the petrodollar, because of the fact that the rest of the world has to have dollars in order to buy oil. If As long as they have that, which that, that could end really quickly, but as long as they have that, they have a certain amount of leverage that they can just pump money, you know, give money to the soldiers, give money to um, police officers, just printing money into existence, um, even if it's not coming from taxation. That Obviously, that's not a, a long-term solution, but um, I believe they would attempt it. I, I believe that they would attempt to, to use violence to, to crush um, a real resistance. And I'm not saying that, that to be um, to scare people, because I, I obviously I want the opposite. I want people to, to have the courage to face it. But I, but I also want to be um, honest, because um, not having, not being honest about it, not saying what you really think is, is, are the stakes, um, I don't think it's ethical in this context. Um, because what, if I'm going to be asking people to, to take that risk, um, to, they, need, they need to be aware of what they're going to be. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, it, I was terrified for most of my um, time in the United States because I was resisting, um, because I was just basically ignoring them. Um, but I lived in um, pretty much consistent fear of them. Um, so I can, I can fully understand it. It's, and not everybody is willing to, to go from to be operating in with that hanging over them, you know, to realize, yes, they could come and get me, you know, seriously, literally come and get me at any moment um, and still be willing to um, you know, put yourself out there. Um, but I think it's also a question of, of understanding the stakes um, and to, to realize, and to put things into perspective, and that, that comes back to that, that, that paradigm shift that, that happened, you know, when I was 18 or so, um, you know, to realize, you know, what the true self is, to realize, um, you know, what it means to be alive and what it means to die. Um, if you're, if you're living basing everything on, on trying to protect this individual self. Um, it, that's, the, that's the perspective that leads us down the road that we're on because everybody's operating out of this, this fear for this, this temporal body. Um, it, we're going to die. It's, it's not, you're not going to be able to change that. 300 years from now, we're all going to be dust, all of us, me, you, everybody out there that you love. Um, and you need to realize that because if, if you if you live as if you're immortal, and which is what most people are doing, because they push their, their the idea of their death out of their mind, um, then you're going to make a lot of fundamental errors that are going to put your children and your grandchildren in a very very bad situation. And when you realize, okay, wait, am I living for me or am I living for my children? Am I living for my children's children or my children's children's children? children? Um, Living for the generations to come, living for the bigger picture, for the bigger self, for, for the totality, to me, is, is, has to be the foundation for, for a real sense of, of morality and ethics and, and, and action. Well, I mean, I think we all fall into that. I mean, even myself, I mean, <laughs> your phone's getting... Um, it, <laughs> um, it's, it's... I mean, it's one thing, obviously, we... That's that's the instinct. Uh, it's 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 written into our genes. It's written into our genes to defend ourselves, but um, it's also written into our genes to defend our families, and especially when you have kids. And that, and that was the big thing that, that that made me go from being aware of all this stuff and you know watching videos and getting prepared um, you know, on our little plot of land to going, okay, I've I've got to fight. I've got to fight. Cause I've got a kid. You know, when I when my kid was coming, it shifted things for me because. By nature, you know, once you have a kid, you, your, your sense of center shifts. Okay, yeah, maybe I'm the center of my universe to some degree, but my kid is also center of my universe. You know, any any father or any mother who um, has their genes in working order is is going to lay down their life for their kid you know, if the situation comes to it. Um, that's genetic. That's not morality. That's just genetic. You know, Animals do the same thing. If there's a predator attacking, they'll go throw themselves in front of that predator. So I think the big challenge we face is to bring that reality, the, 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 the stakes of the situation, to their face, to make them realize it, to make them feel it in their gut, to make them feel it in their bones. This is real. 
We are headed for World War III. We are headed for something the likes of which people can't even imagine. And if we don't stand up now, if we don't fight with everything we've got, um, if you bring that realization to people, they are going to fight. They're going to stand up. They're going to put it into uh, put their themselves behind it if they've got a family. Um, you know, young uh, single men, and maybe it's a little a little different. And maybe it's going to be a little harder to get them to think in, in terms of generations. But the, the side that kind of counteracts that is that young single men um, don't have a lot to lose, so they also tend to be willing to to put themselves on the line physically, um, which is well, yeah, and. It, I mean, I think that that is part of what we're dealing with is is you know awakening the genetic uh, instinct to to defend the human community, to defend the human family, to defend, to defend um, you know even our local communities because um, this is going to affect us on every level. Um, but you know that's the thing. That's why on one hand it is you know it is an information ecology, but it is also an info war because we 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 we're, we're we're at war with a paradigm that is intentionally closing people down and putting them in a situation where they're going to participate and, well, they already are participating in um, horrific activities. American people uh, were convinced to go into Afghanistan, to go into Iraq, and if, they, if, you know, if there was any question about that, who you know, filled those, um, you know, filled up their armies. I mean, there's American citizens out there. Those, those soldiers are American citizens who believed enough in it to go put themselves out there to go participate in it. And then they have the rest of the population who's funding it through taxation. Um, so obviously there's some work to be done. There's obviously we have to f- push a little farther to get to the point where people are even realizing that there's something wrong. I mean, people are, have been positively supporting the system. So we have to get them to not only not positively support the system, but reject the system so there's there's a ways to go yeah and, and 